Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this morning for our consideration from Luke's Gospel, we read in the fifth, uh, the eleventh chapter, beginning the fifth verse. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you is a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, you will not get up and give him bread because he is his friend. Yet because of the man's boldness, you will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, one always has to be careful when you try to take God and make him like a mere man to try to understand his dealings with us. God tells us that my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are far above yours and my ways far above yours. But nevertheless, we always get glimpses from time to time of that relationship that God has with us through various relationships that we have here on earth. We celebrate Mother's Day today. Mothers who were probably the first people in our lives that put us into contact with the Word of God. Of course, fathers were there as well. But nevertheless, the idea that we first learned how to worship, they brought us to God's house. When we did things that were wrong in our lives, it was usually the fear of what mom or dad would say that usually would curb our actions. Or on the other hand, we just didn't care what they thought, and so we did it anyway which is a direct reflection of how we sometimes treat God. I don't care what he says. I'm going to do it anyway. But as mothers become grandmothers, then all of a sudden it's like, I hope grandma doesn't find out about this. I hope, don't tell grandma about this, because if she'd find out, she'd be so ashamed of me, so embarrassed. Don't let her know. And so, mothers, your, your work is never done. You still have a profound influence in the lives of people that many in, in the next generation. There's also something about the love of God that we see in a mother as well, insofar as sometimes we do things that we're very much ashamed of. And yet, mom and dad, they still loved us. How can this be? How can you love someone? Like, look what I did. I've, I've done these things. And... But yet, when we confessed our deeds and we asked for their forgiveness, didn't you feel so much better? That unconditional love? It's a picture we get of God. We can always come to Him, we can always express to Him our remorse, our sorrow over something that we did. And we know that He is there to show his love. And that he receives us back because that's who God is. That's what God does. And that's why we have every confidence in the world to come to him. The picture that we have this morning, Jesus had just taught his disciples how to pray. As Jesus was wont to do, he would sometimes separate himself from the group of disciples and go off by himself. And he would come back and say, let's move on, let's go to the next town or village or whatever. In one occasion, they saw the Lord off by himself, and he came back, and they said, What were you doing over there? And he said, I was praying. Lord, teach us how to pray. When you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, and so on, in which we commonly refer to as the Lord's Prayer. 
And that's why it gets its title. It was a prayer that the Lord taught his disciples. This text then follows that instruction in prayer. And it gives us a picture of God who hears our prayer, who answers our prayer, and who desires our coming to him in prayer. It's somewhat almost a, a silly scenario that he poses for them. A friend who is traveling at night, much more common today, of course, although it was common at that time too, the heat of the day, it was not a good time to be traveling, so they would travel in the evening hours. And so it's not out of the realm of possibility that this would have taken place. But nevertheless, comes at midnight. Knocks at the door, I need a place to stay. Okay. Brings them in, and what was the common form of hospitality, you would offer something to eat because they were hungry from their travels. Didn't have anything to eat. So he goes over to a neighbor, also a friend of his. And he knocks on the door, and it's midnight. Hey, we're in bed. What are you doing up at this hour? No, I'm not going to give you any bread at midnight. You know, isn't it interesting? You know, it shows us a little reflection of ourselves too. When when we're put on a spot of a of an emergency, or someone comes to us with a in a dire strait, and my car broke down, can can you give me a ride to town? Can you do this or can you do that? The first thing we think of. Oh boy, I'm gonna lose sleep tonight. I'm gonna be so tired at work tomorrow if I do. You know, the first thing to think about is us. We don't think of that person that is broke down with their vehicle or whatever the situation may be. It's how it's gonna affect me if I do something here. And so it was very typical of this person. No, I'm not gonna get up. It's midnight. Decent people were in bed by this time. What's going on here? But we're told that because of the persistence, and we'll get to that in a minute. Yes, when do we pray? We pray when there's some need. And sometimes when there is some very dramatic need. Yes, we do upon occasion pray at other times, giving thanks and so on, but for the majority of the time it's when something is out of my control, out of my hands, it's something that I cannot do with or I cannot do on my own. Then we turn to the Lord in prayer. Lord, help me. Lord, Lord have mercy on me. So it was with this person. There was a need. He did not have any bread in his house. He couldn't solve the problem himself. It would take way too long to make it. And as a result, he needed to go and ask a friend. And it's the same way for us. The Lord says, it shouldn't always be when you need me that you pray to me. But when you do need me, you can come and pray to me. We're told the, the person was a friend. Yeah, he didn't go knock on someone's house he didn't know. He went to someone he knew, and he probably had an idea that, yeah, I know the person's going to be a little put off by this, but I know he's a friend. He, he will probably do this for me. What the Lord is showing to us is that uh, perhaps we ought to get to know our Lord better. And the better we get to know our Lord, the more comfortable we are coming to Him and bringing our requests to Him. The better I know what the Lord has done for me and for my salvation, I know that I can come to the Lord with this request. I know I can come to Him with this problem, with this concern, and He will listen to me. And so he came, he came and asked. Can you think about that for a moment? I would venture to say that there probably weren't too many times in either of these two people's lives that the, the neighbor asked him for three loaves of bread, especially for three loaves of bread at midnight. And so there are those times that when we come to the Lord, we say, I don't want to bother you, Lord, but I've got this problem, and so on. No. No. But we, we come to the Lord, we come to Him, and we, we put our requests before Him. We're told that the man was persistent. The neighbor didn't want to, no, I'm not getting up, I'm not opening the door, I'm not giving you bread at this time of night. But he says, but because he was persistent in prayer, because he continued to pray for him, the man got up and gave him what he asked for. 
It tells us something also about being persistent in prayer. You know, the first thing is, if the Lord doesn't do it for me today, I give up. I quit. Yeah, I tried going to church. I tried reading my Bible. I tried the devotions and, and prayer and things. It just didn't work. My life's no better. That's nonsense and so on. Now, how many are so quick to give up on God? Do you think, perhaps, that the Lord is teaching us patience to be persistent? Do you think that sometimes the Lord drags out in, in our situation that it's meant to bring us closer to Him, to strengthen our faith, to do those things? Did that skip our mind? Do we not think that to be a possibility? Do we, do we just say, no, okay, yeah, he's not going to get up at 12 o'clock at night and give me bread, so okay, maybe I'll go ask another neighbor. No. He knew the man. And we know God too. How many things are there in your life that you just let go? Just said, well, that's not good. Now, granted, I, I probably will not ever get a chance to play in the major leagues. That one has passed me by. But how many things are there in your life that you've always wanted to perhaps pursue? You said, ah, oh, no, it's not. Uh, it's, it's, uh, keep pursuing them. Keep doing it. Keep praying about it. Who knows what the Lord has in mind for you? Who knows what things the Lord has? Just because the door is closed right now, we wanted to do this, I wanted to do this, but then, then we had children. And then I had, and so I had to put my career on the back burner and things like that and do this and that because of taking care of family. Oh, what a blessed privilege it is to be able to take care of your family. What a blessed privilege it is to be a mother or a father, to have the responsibility and the privilege that God gives to you to raise your children. You only have that opportunity once. This is God's time for you. Rejoice in it. Use it. And so, if there are things that I wish I could have done, maybe they were a little selfish at the time, but I really thought that maybe I could do that, but then, bring it to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. Keep on praying about it. I don't get along with some of my relatives. Oh, I wish our family could get along, but I guess that's not possible. It is practically hate each other. Keep praying about it. Don't give up. Don't just say, well, there's nothing I can do. Granted, there's nothing you can do, but you can pray. There's much God can do. You think he's maybe trying to tell us that in this parable? Keep on praying. Keep on bringing it to him. And watch what blessings the Lord can work in your life. But if it doesn't work, I throw it away. If I don't like it, I don't, I don't ever do it again. We are so fleeting in our attitudes at times. Be persistent. Keep on coming to the Lord. If there's something the Lord does not want you to have, then trust in that. Because that's the last part of this. You know, what son would ask for a fish and the father give him a snake instead? Or ask for an egg and the father give him a scorpion instead? You understand what that means, but well. You come to God and you ask for something and God is not going to give you something more harmful than what you ask for. He is not going to give you something that is just the opposite of what you want or just uh, in so far as, you know, being worse for you. It may be the opposite of what you want in so far as it's better for you that way. But that was a picture he gives. The Father will do for you what is right and what is best for you. So we approach him with that same attitude. Lord, do for me in this situation, I bring before you in prayer what is right for me. And we pray it, and we continue to pray it, and we live it. And we trust in him to be doing what is right for us. So if I'm not going to be a major league baseball pitcher, maybe I'll preach for a few years. And if I don't do this, maybe I'll do this for a few years. And then the Lord will bless whatever it is that he so sees you doing. 
and you know that this was right, and this was good, and this was pleasing to God. And so the Lord teaches his disciples how to pray, but then he teaches them about prayer, about the attitude of prayer, about getting to know him better and that relationship we have with him through faith and through the word, through sacrament. And then being persistent in our prayer, constantly coming before him because he never tires of us coming to him. We tire much sooner of going to the Lord than he ever tires of our hearing or his hearing our requests and our prayers. And we keep that in mind and then we know that Lord, your will be done. It strengthens our faith. It guides us in our faith. And it helps us to know that we have one who is sympathetic to our cause, who knows our every need, and knows us better than we, who is directing and controlling and doing things in our life that will be for our best good. As we grow in faith and we grow in love for the Lord who is and has given us all blessings. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in a true faith in Jesus Christ and the life everlasting. Amen.